Hello everyone and welcome to live coverage of the Elegant Design Bureau Station Module 1 launch. The flight director has given the go for launch and the clock is now counting down from the final planned hold of T-4 minutes. The payload is the Sajita Upper Stage Tank which has been converted into a station module similar to the way Skylab was from the third stage of a Saturn V rocket. Unlike Skylab, however, it is a mere 3.7 meters in diameter compared to Skylab's huge 6.6 .6 meters. It is also being launched without its main solar panels, so it will remain in a standby powered down state. Uh, this is possible because it does not have critical science experiments on board or a significant amount of supplies that need to be refrigerated or frozen. Station Module 1 is powered with a control module which will serve the entire completed station, maintaining its orientation and providing periodic boosts. The control module also has small solar panels to supply the standby power Station Module 1 needs while powered down. Both modules were assembled at the EDB's clean room facilities in Southern California by the best Kerbal engineers who thought Top Gear's Reliant Robbins shuttle was a brilliant idea. Here you see the Kerbal's hard at work on the station module, which is a fuel tank with insulation and micrometeorite protection surrounding it, and also the control module with the RCS thrusters, which are actually the vernier thrusters from the service module that we saw on the Lynx launch. The modules were then transported as a unit by truck to Cape Canaveral. Here at the Cape it is partly cloudy with the temperature at 82 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind is mild. Once again, we have dodged some worse weather, which is expected to hit in the coming days. This morning, the EDB sent a helicopter out to the pan to get some good shots of the rocket undergoing final preparation, but the copter's cameras had some issues, so the video had artifacting. We are scheduled to launch at 4.40 p.m. local time, and this time the window is instantaneous, so if there are any issues at this point, the next opportunity will be tomorrow. Propellant loading is complete at this point, and the rocket is filled to the brim with methane and oxygen in both stages, as well as the payload. With its payload and fuel, it weighs approximately 320 tons on a launch pad. Its thrust-to-weight ratio at launch is about 1.4. T-1 minute and 30 seconds. This is the launch of Station Module 1 on the Sajita launch vehicle. T-1 minute, guidance is now internal, the flight computer has begun its pre-launch sequence and will monitor the rocket for any anomalies and shut down the engines as necessary should any anomalies occur. T-40 seconds, propellant tanks are now fully pressurized in preparation for feeding the methane and oxygen into the engines at ignition. T-20, T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, ignition sequence start, 1, and launch. And we have a launch of the Sajita launch vehicle carrying station module 1 to low Earth orbit, and the tower is clear. We have had a request to declare more things nominal during this launch than in the previous launch. However, the EDB has decided not to infringe on the nominal motifs of our nominal competitors. And so we will confine ourselves to chamber pressure, trajectory, and telemetry. And uh, they all look good right now. Uh, they are all nominal at this point. 35 seconds into the launch, the rocket is at 4 kilometers and approaching the speed of sound. The rocket is past the speed of sound, 7 kilometers in altitude, headed through max Q at this point. T-10, 
50 plus one minute, chamber pressure is nominal, trajectory is nominal, and telemetry is good. Rocket is now at 15 kilometers and through the region of maximum dynamic pressure, approximately 11 kilometers downrange. We are one and a half minutes into the launch, 28 kilometers in altitude, 1,000 meters per second. The rocket is now more than 30 kilometers downrange. The payload for this launch is approximately 11.4 tons compared to the 15 ton capacity for the launch vehicle. The upper stage is expected to deorbit itself uh, this time and it will deorbit over the Indian Ocean. T plus two minutes and the engines have throttled down to limit g-forces on the payload. Chamber pressure is continuing to look nominal, trajectory is nominal, and we are at 60 kilometers, approaching 2,000 meters per second. In perhaps more common units, that's around 4,480 miles an hour, or 7,200 kilometers per hour. Two and a half minutes into the launch, we are at 75 kilometers in altitude, approximately 120 kilometers downrange. The upper stage is prepared for ignition at this point, and we are waiting first stage cutout and separation. The rocket is currently at 90 kilometers in altitude, 2,500 meters per second. And we have engine shutdown and engine ignition on the upper stage. And a good nozzle extension. Three minutes and 20 seconds into the launch, we have a nominal chamber pressure. And telemetry is good from both the rocket and the payload. Awaiting payload fairing separation. And we do have Payload fairing separation confirmation. Payload fairing separation is nominal. We are four minutes into the launch, 139 kilometers in altitude, 3,600 meters per second. We've lost the video feed from the rocket temporarily, and we are on the simulated view here. After this launch, the EDB has prepared Station Module 2, which is a docking module that will facilitate the expansion of facilities and the ability of visiting vehicles to dock to the station and that will be brought up along with a tug that will bring it to the station because the docking module does not have the control module with its RCS thrusters and that would not be sufficient to dock the vehicles together in any case. After that, the station would still require a solar truss to be operational and then it can power up as we have restored our video feed of the rocket. Modules 1 and 2 do not provide an ideal living space for visiting tourists though, as neither has any windows. And so we are looking towards cutting a deal with Bigelow Airspace for one of their BA-330 modules to add to the station. And that would provide better living space for the visiting tourists, which would arrive using a Lynx spacecraft. We are 5 minutes and 20 seconds into the launch. 180 kilometers in altitude, 5,700 meters per second. The rocket is more than 800 kilometers downrange and telemetry is still looking good. In recent space news, Blue Origin unveiled its Blue Moon Lunar Lander, and that is competition for the EDB's own ED-1 lander stage, which uses methylox in comparison to the Blue Moon's hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, the methylox mix is better for refueling on Mars, whereas Blue Moon may be a better alternative 
if it can survive the long trip to Mars, but it is, of course, more ideally suited to refuel on the moon. So there is a bit of competition there in addition to the existing competition between the EDB's planned Sagita Super Heavy, which is a regular Sagita rocket with four boosters on it, and the Blue Origin New Glenn, which are both in roughly the same territory as the Falcon Heavy. We are 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the launch at 184 kilometers in altitude, past 7,000 meters per second and nearing orbit. The vehicle is now 1,300 kilometers downrange and increasing that rapidly. And we have a good shutdown on the Sagita upper stage into its planned insertion orbit of 223.79 by 179.56 kilometers. The payload itself will boost its orbit using the control module to a planned 428 kilometer circular orbit, which is roughly a one hour and 35 minute orbit. We are now waiting for payload separation confirmation, and then we will stand by to see if we can capture the upper stage retro burn as it exposes itself. The EDB does have an opportunity for collaboration with Blue Origin, as Blue Origin does not plan to produce a lander cabin. It is not producing the spacecraft that goes on top of their lander stage. And we do have confirmation of successful payload separation, and Station Module 1 is away from the upper stage. And so it will be able to conduct operations as planned. The control module is firing its RCS thrusters in a planned sequence. And it looks like the control module does, in fact, have nominal control over Station Module 1 at this point. The EDB is, of course, producing a Moon and Mars lander cabin based on the Lynx cabin that previously launched in the previous mission. And that could fit on the stretched Blue Moon if the Blue Moon could provide ascent as well, which is unclear from the presentation whether the Blue Moon is intended to reignite and allow ascent of a spacecraft, but there is no particular technical reason why it shouldn't be able to do that. But the EDB's lander cabin does not have an ascent stage built in, unlike the Apollo lunar lander. Okay, we are back to simulated view, trying to reacquire the video on the upper stage at this point. Okay, we do have the video of the upper stage as it prepares for its retro burn. It is waiting to get a safe distance away from Station Module 1 as we do not wish its thrust to damage the Station Module at this point. So far the modules are not named and nor is the station which is just tentatively called the EDB Tourist Space Station. The EDB hopes to hold a naming competition but it is uncertain exactly how to go about that at this point. Not a uh, imminent priority. And we have ignition of the upper stage engine for a brief burn that will bring it down to a deorbit. And it looks like that burn is good. So the upper stage has successfully oriented itself and deorbited itself. And with that, the launch of Station Module 1 is successful. Its solar panels are powering the systems that need to be powered for operations. Its thrusters are operating and will be able to bring the module to its planned orbit. It should be in position within a day and we do not plan to make any further updates about that. So the next broadcast will either be a commercial launch or it will be Station Module 2, the docking module with the tug, uh, and that should be coming up later this month. So with that, thank you for watching this presentation of the launch of Station Module 1 on the Sagita launch vehicle. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast, and we'll see you next time.